We all too often take for granted the safety guaranteed by the fire service. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, they are ready to respond to emergencies great and small. With the University of Dundee alone accommodating over 17,000 students, it is unsurprising that they have a substantial effect on the way the fire service operates. Student accommodations are usually a high-risk premises. Between 2012 and 13, there were three substantial fires within university residents. The fire service doesn't just deal with fire. Firefighters have to be prepared, both physically and mentally, for a variety of situations, each with their own complexities. If you've lived in student accommodation, chances are you've met the crew of the Blackness Fire Station, probably around 3am after your flatmate burns some toast. But what does it take to become a member of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service? We have a three-year training programme, and it varies from firefighting to various rescues to chemical incidents to community events, everything's involved. It doesn't sound a lot, but there's an awful lot involved in having to do this training. It's the organisation, it's finding the place to do it. Typically we would carry out training on every set of shifts, and it normally consists of a theory session followed by a practical session, which might involve a real, real-time real scenario where we would uh, use cosmetic smoke within the building, uh, conduct search and rescue, uh, conduct firefighting operations. That involves quite a lot of setting up of, of equipment, uh, resources, personnel, breathing apparatus. Each day is different and we never ever know what we're going out to. Round about Freshers Week is unsurprisingly a busy period, but generally the, the rest of the year it, it, it's really, really difficult to predict how busy we're going to be with either fires or false alarms. So what happens when an alarm is set off? When the call comes in, the crew immediately heads for the vehicles. A printer gives a readout containing rough details of the incident, especially important when responding to larger complexes such as Ninewells Hospital. The crew's protective clothing and equipment is set up around the vehicles to streamline response time. The vehicles themselves don't contain a GPS device and the crew must instead rely on the driver's own knowledge of the routes through the city. And now, the rush to the incident begins. The station has no way of knowing if the call-out is for a real emergency or a false alarm, so they must treat each one as a life-threatening situation. A minute can save a life. Seconds can save a life. It could be a fire beneath you, it could be a fire in your actual flat in a different room, it could be a fire in an adjacent flat, you just don't know. The fire alarm is there to save your life. If you don't react to the alarm going off, and we don't know that you're in there, you're not just risking your own lives, you're risking the firefighters that are coming in to save you. Every time there's an, al uh, an alarm, you must evacuate. There's more and more students within Dundee itself. More and more buildings have popped up, there's more residences to take over from the old residences. So you get a bigger influx of younger students coming in. And the good thing is, it's good to meet them all. It really is good. It's good to go and have the chats with them and explain why we go to do the fire safety, that we're looking to, you know, make them safe within their residence and make them safe within themselves. How much do you think it costs for the fire service to respond to a false alarm? About 500 quid? 2,000 pounds? A couple of hundred pounds maybe? The cost that that incurs for false calls to university premises is about 500 pounds per fire appliance per hour. We also try and explain how smoke alarms work and how sensitive they are. Your typical student accommodation you will have smoke detectors in every room heat detector in the kitchen and you'll have a fire alarm system operated by a brake glass probably at the main uh, door to the accommodation. And a simple thing like drying 
your hair with a hair dryer or hair straighteners under uh, a smoke detector can set it off. The smoke detector doesn't know it's a false alarm, so really the whole block has to evacuate, whether that's five o'clock at night or three o'clock in the morning. It's an inconvenience to the students as they've got to stand outside in the rain and it's an inconvenience to us because we've got to attend. You wouldn't believe some of the things that we, we can be asked to go to. Let's go and check room number six. So they opened the door and all they could see was a mass of clothes and towels and pants. I had uh, a chinchilla stuck behind their wardrobe. A baby seagull rescue. And they're looking around, they're looking around and one guy went to step and he actually stood on him. I've had two naked people handcuffed to themselves and requiring our help. Um, it was dangling from a TV aerial on the side of a building. As he was lying underneath the coats and the shoes and the pants, he was that drunk. We had to erect the ladder and I was the one elected to go up and unhook its wing from the aerial bit. Do you know what the main cause of uh, fire alarms is? Probably cooking, bad cooking. Actually, I call some myself. Like, Probably drunk, I think it's drunk, 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 drunk late night. Yeah. yeah. It was the first week and I think I put like a chocolate croissant in the microwave for, for a bit longer than I should have. If it's early hours of the morning, I don't think they're quite so aware because they might be a little bit drunk. And we understand that mistakes will happen and accidents will happen. So we kind of accept the fact that we have to go to alarms and deal with it. With so many of Blackness Fire Station's call-outs being to university halls, students clearly have a profound impact on the emergency services. The fire service isn't just there to deal with fires. It consists of highly trained individuals willing to respond to a host of emergencies. Day in, day out, they risk their own lives to ensure the safety of others.